Good morning and welcome to the standing committee meeting for Wednesday, January 27th, 2021. Council will continue to meet virtually until further notice. Meetings can now be viewed live on the city channel and live streamed on YouTube. Our first order of business is public comment. I would like to remind all speakers that the rules of council state that comments are limited to matters of concern, official action or deliberation, which are or may be, be before city council and profanity will not be permitted. Um, when you are called on, please state your name and neighborhood for the record, and then your three minutes will begin. Our first speaker is Aikuhana Haumalkina. Our first speaker is Aikuhana Haumalkina. I do not see our first speaker. Um, we will move on to our second speaker is Tim Stevens. Is Tim Stevens with us? Is Tim Stevens with us? I do not see Mr. Stevens, our next speaker is Shaman Pomai. Greetings, greetings. I open my public comments with a sacred song. In pata na wache, na wache, chicho se, maya, maya, eche kue na. This is an honor of my great grandmothers and all of the grandmothers who have told us who we are as the Aborigine Americans. I asked my mother when I was a child, mommy, are we black? Because I've heard this commonly said in the playgrounds with my friends and she said, we're not colors. I then said, well, what are we? And she says, we're the original people. Didn't know what that meant. I asked my grandmother, Medea, who fed the entire community of Homewood and Lincoln and East Liberty food and she fed the single mothers and she mentored to them and she guided them. I said, my dear, what, what are we? And she said, we're just the people, child. We're just the people. And then I asked my great grandmother who was 105 who came to bury my grandmother and we called her Mambo. And I said, Mambo, what are we? And she said, we the people of the land. Child, what are you talking about? I said, well, aren't we African? And she said, I don't know anything about no Africa. And then my great great grandmother, who was 125 when she transitioned, said, We've always been here. So, with that being said, as an Aborigine in America, being forced to be assimilated as Black and African American is against the Constitution, international bodies of laws, and all of our treaties. I've dealt with the situation with the local city of Pittsburgh police and Aaron Bruni of the Office of Municipal Investigations and is investigating this egregious act as I was pulled over as I was traveling upon the land with my travel plate for my nation ripped from my automobile as I was forced to assimilate it and my automobile was stolen as they say towed. Against all constitutional rights that are in law, treaties as well as international laws on how to deal with the indigenous people, the Aborigine people. And the Pittsburgh Citizens Police Review Board is also reviewing this case as well. So as these cases are being adjudicated or being investigated and being finalized and a response is going to be made, it is incumbent upon city council to honor their oaths as well. For this information will be coming across your desk and I implore you to do the right thing. Do the right thing based upon your constitutional duties to uphold, defend, protect and honor the constitution as you are all sworn. I look forward to continuing our government to government relationship in the most positive, peaceful manner. We are speaking with your land access people. We are and have already identified parcels of land that we need to grow our own food, to sustain our own selves, community centers so that we can educate our own children and the people and your people on who we are. So we can always have peaceful interactions upon the land, the land where your ancestors came to gain your own liberty and freedom. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, 
I do want to go back to see if Mr. Stevens has joined us. Okay, I don't believe so. So that does exhaust our list of registered speakers, which moves us on to our standing committee agenda. Would the clerk please take the roll? Reverend Burgess. Here. Mr. Coghill. Here. Ms. Gross. Here. Mr. Krause. Here. Mr. O'Connor. Here. Mrs. Bill Smith. Here. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. Mr. Lavelle Chair. Here. Nine members present. Thank you. Our first committee of the day is Finance and Law, um, which is chaired by myself. Our first new paper is Bill 1082. Bill 1082, resolution amending resolution 55 of 2018, which authorized the mayor to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding to plan and implement the creation of financial empowerment centers fund within the city to enter into a professional services agreement with neighborhood allies for the continued operation of financial empower centers for the city and further authorizing agreements or contracts and expenditures not to exceed $10,000. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next bill, Bill 1083. Bill 1083, resolution further amending resolution number 863 of 2018, as amended entitled resolution adopting and approving the 2019 capital budget and the 2019 CDBG program and the 2019 through 2024 capital improvement program by reducing Smallman Street reconstruction by $705,000, increasing step repair and replacement by $400,000 and increasing complete streets by $305,000. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1084. Bill 1084, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into an agreement with LexisNexis for the subscription to an online legal research tool at a cost not to exceed $68,400 over a term of three years. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. That takes us to our P cards. We need a motion to approve the P cards. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? P cards are approved. Uh, uh, that will take us to our Public Safety Services Committee, chaired by Mr. O'Connor. Um, one new paper, Bill 1087. Bill 1087, Ordinance Supplementing the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances, Title mm -hmm. Administrative Article 3, Organization, Chapter 116, Department of Public Safety, to add a new subsection, 116.17, for addition on the execution of no knock warrants by requiring all city police officers when executing any warrant to physically knock and announce the presence of police before entering a premises. Motion to approve discussion. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'd like to be added as well, but um, I believe there could be some possible technical yes. amendments made to this by Tuesday, um, but I will open the floor. I believe I'll pass it off to Councilman Lavelle for an amendment or just open the floor for discussion. I'm, I'm, I have discussion. I know we're going back and forth. Okay. Thank Sorry, you. Councilman. I'll let you go. Thanks. No problem. Uh, discussion. President Smith. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I spoke to a couple of members this morning about this. Um, and I think that we're in agreement that there needs to be some amendments, at least some conversation, because I think that there's yeah. some things on the state level that supersede our laws that um, we have not addressed. And I think that those, those are the things that we want to discuss. Um, you know, I know mm -hmm. the states had, had made several comments and um, mentioned many times that they would make work on some amendments as well um, to, this, to this law. But I think that uh, right now, if we're going to do this, we need to make sure that what we're doing 
um, isn't superseded by their laws, which right currently I think this will be. So I just want to have a, a conversation with the director. So I'd like to make a motion to hold for one week until we have the uh, conversation. Madam President, could you hold your motion just for a moment? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe Kelly Mystic from the law department sent some revisions out yesterday. Do we know if Kelly's coming to the table or um, if, uh, if it is the pleasure of the body to hold a week, should we schedule executive session to discuss uh, changes that are necessary? I understand that we need to be in compliance with state law as well too, uh, which uh, I wanna see us be and I'm willing to assist in that effort. Um, uh, and uh, just for the public's edification in general, we do not, uh, we already abide by no knock warrants. Uh, and uh, uh, what we're attempting to achieve here is just the codification of that policy. Uh, and that it's important that we're in keeping with state law. And that is the reason for the hold and for uh, further discussion. So uh, Madam President, it, it, it's whatever your pleasure, I'm happy to assist with um, the week hold, uh, but I'm just wondering if we should enter executive session to discuss the details. So how about we, um, the motion will be a motion to hold for executive session. So can I suggest at least one thing while we're doing this that I just yes, want to- it's yeah. I do want to say though that um, Councilman Lavelle and I have introduced this directly from the community. This was not something that we did um, alone, but this is coming from a, a variety of community groups. So if we are going, and they are really, it's architects and it's authors. So I'm simply suggesting though, that as we have this conversation, that we are mindful of having a conversation with them too, um, as to our direction so that they can be partners with us as we move forward. Can I ask, respond to that please? Hold on, like, hold on, hold on, we're still, we're still on first round. Sorry. Anyone else for first round? Okay, second round, President Smith. Thank you, I would just like to say that Reverend, many times before when we worked on legislation, we brought the community to the table with law enforcement. I think those are the, and, and council members, I think that's some of the best legislation that we have currently and some of the best things that we've done. Um, so I'm okay if we even bring the community to a meeting. Uh, with the public safety director and and police, I actually think that there's some, there. I think we also need to have some of the women's groups there because some of these <laughs> cases sometimes involve um, domestic violence while they are serving warrants for domestic violence when things escalate. And I wouldn't want to see somebody in a domestic violence situation shot because they had some our police officers didn't knock on a door. So I just want to make sure whatever we're doing, uh, we're I, I'm I'm all for being more inclusive and having the community at the table with the police. I think that is the best way to do it, and I'm happy to schedule that or work with mm -hmm. you and Councilman Laval to do so, or Councilman O'Connor. I'm I'm happy to work with them. Thank you. Anyone else for second round before yes. we obtain the motion? President Thanks, Mr. Chair. I um I. I just want to say that I agree that we need to make sure that the community members who have been putting not just energy, but real time. I mean, they've been out there collecting signatures to put this on the ballot. And we are hoping that we can prevent them from spending any more time doing that if we can just pass it. But I do agree that we need to make sure that the voices of the people who have actually been putting real time into this are part of this. And I would just like to say, I'd like to be part of any conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yep, may I? Councilwoman Gross. Thank yes. you, appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge the same thing that I um, appreciate that there have been so many people out just, you know, collecting ballot signatures. You see them um, out at collection sites on people's porches, at businesses. And it's, um, I think uh, I'm supportive. And I wanted to acknowledge as well that the language is the same as the ballot, is it not? You, I remember, so Related. Councilman Burr just mentioned that this was kind of generated language um, from the, the efforts of citizens um, on the street and to acknowledge the amount of research and work that they've done as well. Um, I just wanted to say thank you and I'm very supportive and I look forward to this moving forward. Thank you. Anyone else for a second round? Councilman Coghill. So um, as Councilman Krause pointed out, we don't use this technique in Pittsburgh and I'm glad for it. Um, and I just wanted to 
point out, you know, it's as equally as protective for the police officers as it is for the people who, whose home that they're entering. So, so I see it as a good thing all the way around. I'm glad we don't practice it, but yeah, to solidify it uh, is a good thing. I will be supportive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else second round? Seeing none, um, President Smith, do you want to offer up your motion? Yeah, a motion to hold for executive session and community meetings. And second. second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? It will be held. Thank you all. Um, that will take us to our Public Works Committee, which is chaired by Mr. Coghill. Um, first new paper is Bill 1069. Bill 1069, resolution granting unto Sean and Winnie, their successors, and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use of their own cost and expense an existing set of wood steps and a retaining wall at 705 Hazelwood Avenue in the 15th Ward, 5th Council District, Motion to approve. A uh, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Uh, Bill 1070. Bill 1070, resolution granting unto Bloomfield Garfield Corporation. Your successors and assign the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense a new set of new concrete stairs and landing and a new vertical platform lift at 113 North Pacific Avenue in the 10th Ward, 9th Council District. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1071. Bill 1071, resolution granting unto the Pittsburgh Student Housing LLC, their successors, and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use of their own cost and expense, a projecting sign at 1035th Avenue, 1st Ward, 6th Council District. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1072. Bill 1072, resolution granting unto Stevens Richard Jr. their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use of their own cost and expense to install a new projecting sign at 2025 East Carson Street, 17th Ward, 3rd Council District. Motion to approve. Uh, second, extremely brief discussion. Uh, so, uh, I'm seeing a whole lot of these coming before us. And they used to come before us all the time because even though they may be at an elevated height, they do encroach the public right of way. I'm just curious if there's a different policy, perhaps that's not the right word, a different approach from the public works department to begin bringing this back to the council because of public encroachment. I'm gonna look into it on my own, but I just thought I'd put it out there. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1073. Bill 1073, resolution granting unto Kellogg Holdings LLC, their successors and assign the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use of their own cost and expense to install two new projecting signs at 2026. East Carson Street, 17th Ward, 3rd Council District. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1074. Bill 1074, resolution amending resolution 849, entitled Providing for the Letting for and during the calendar year 2018, 19, and 20 of contracts and for the use of existing contracts for professional services, including planning, architectural engineering, and real estate services, as well as construction administration, management, and inspection services related to the assessment, design, construction, and maintenance of the city's capital assets, including infrastructure, building, and land as needed by the various departments of the city. Funding for these services are to come from the capital budget, 
and the projects supported by the professional services to allow for continuation of services for ongoing projects previously assigned under the existing on-call contracts through December 31st, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1075. Bill 1075, resolution amending resolution 97 of 2018, entitled resolution providing for a contract and or agreements providing for the design, repairs, maintenance, improvement, emergencies, and or the purchase of materials, equipment, and supplies in connection with the McFerrin Street Bridge project and providing for a reimbursement agreement with the Commonwealth and the Department of Transportation and providing for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $3,750,000 to increase the total not to exceed the $3,789,680.36 for payment of work performed by Goloset Construction. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1077. Bill 1077, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Public Works to receive grant funding from the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority's Green Revitalization of our Waterways Program for Reitman Park Green Stormwater Infrastructure Phase 2, and further providing for expenditures not to exceed $352,047.92. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to acknowledge that this is the phase two of Whiteman Park project, which is in the district I represent. And um, this is just very exciting. The, the phase one is, is the park, it's a playground, it's the things that everyone sees and it's such a beautiful park and it does have a green infrastructure component to it. But to really make it work properly, we need phase two and phase two is going to be taking all of the different downspouts in the connecting um, uh, the streets that sort of flow into the park because the park really wants to be a pond. It used to be a, a skating pond back in the 1920s. So that's what it wants to be. So by taking advantage of that, disconnecting downspouts and allowing that to flow into this new kind of wetland area, um, green infrastructure project in the park, we're gonna be keeping it's going to be helping us with our sewage overflow problem and it's going to be doing a whole number of things that benefit um, entire parts of the city, not just the, the neighbors who often experience sewage backups in their basements when it rains, even just, just a little bit. So um, it's sort of a triple win here and um, we'll offer an educational component in the park too. I just want to thank Councilman O'Connor for his leadership on Alcasan and the whole Alcasan board for approving this, um, this funding for the GROW grant for this project. And uh, it was exciting to see the contract in PWSA be um, approved as well, just last week for this the second phase. So thanks to everyone involved. Um, we're, we're, we're excited to see um, what happens with the second phase. Council member, could I just add to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to thank Councilman Strasburg. She's been on this project for a number of years. But as she mentioned, it, it's great that phase two is going around the park. So many times when we do these green infrastructure projects, we just look at, you know, grass and hillsides and trees, but there's way more to it. And based on um, the project itself and going for phase two for, for the GROW grants at Alcasan, we're able to, as Councilwoman mentioned, not just worry about the residents around Whiteman Park, but this actually flows into four mile run. So you're actually solving a greater problem for, you know, five or six neighborhoods, if not more. So I just want to thank her for the willingness to do that and look at the scope, not just at the park, but outside of it. So I think that's important when we start talking about more green infrastructure projects mm -hmm. around parks that we go outside of just the facility of the park. So thank you for your leadership and uh, I'll let everybody know at Alcastan as well. Thank you. Thank you both. Any further discussion? Councilman Coghill. I just had a question for Councilwoman Strasburger. So the goal is to make it a pond again and to feed it with rainwater? So I was corrected by the engineers when I called it a wetland. It's not exactly a wetland because it's not 
filled with water all the time, but but there's a green there's a green there's a rain garden essentially and that flows through the middle of the park. Most of the time, and especially now, it's dry and it's planted and has vegetation. But once it is hooked up, all the lines are hooked up properly and we're getting the phase two in place. Um, every time it rains, it's gonna funnel all that water into that wetland area and it'll be it'll fill up with water and it'll sort of slowly sink into the system um, just like a rain garden is supposed to. So that's why I say it's an educational feature too. You know, kids will be there probably looking at the water and all the different life that's in the water and the plants and stuff. So um, it's sort of taking a park that wants to be a pond and managing it a little bit. Right, right. No, that's great. That's great. That's always interesting to me to utilize our water that it's become such a big problem in some of my areas and to create it something good from that is great. So that's all. Thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1079. Um, 1078. Oh, did I skip one? I apologize. Bill 1078. Bill 1078, resolution amending resolution number 466, effective September 21st, 2020, authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement or use of the existing agreements between the city and Studio Zuid for the professional landscape architectural services for Homewood Park infrastructure upgrades at a cost not to exceed $1,630,014 by increasing the total allocation by $54,855 from $1,630,014 to $1,684,869. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor. Can I just thank, congratulate Councilman Burgess. He's doing so much work in his area. I just want to congratulate him. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Now on to Bill 1079. Bill 1079 resolution authorizes the mayor and director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement between the city and Karen Minsamoya for the creation and installation of public art at Southside Park at a cost not to exceed $24,000. Motion to approve. Second, very brief discussion. Uh, I, I don't want to delay the meeting. If uh, whoever might be listening from uh, Public Works, if they could just reach out to the office. I'm just curious about what they're defining as Southside Park. If it is the park up on Josephine Street or if it's the riverfront uh, Southside Park. Uh, and that's all. If they just please reach out to my office. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. That takes us to our Land Use and Economic Development Committee, which is chaired by Mr. Wilson. Uh, first deferred paper is Bill 926. Bill 926, resolution a, approving a conditional use application under the Pittsburgh Code Title IX Zoning Article 4, Chapter 910 to Meyer, Ankovich, and Scott on behalf of 429 Forbes for the transfer of development rights involving 87 dwelling units from 201 Stanwick Street, GTD Golden Triangle Subdistrict D to 429 Forbes Avenue zoned GTB Golden Triangle Subdistrict B, First Ward Council District 6. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 943. Bill 943, resolution providing for the designation as a historic structure. Under Title 11 of the Code of Ordinances, that certain structure known as the VA Facilities Chapel Building 10, located at 7180 Highland Drive in Lincoln and Lemington, Belmar, 12th Ward of the city, the city will be the future owner of these properties and there has been no objection to the nomination of this property by the owner. Motion to approve, brief discussion. Second. 
Councilman Wilson. Thank you, Chair. So these are the public hearing was held, and these are um, this bill and, and the next one are the nominations for um, a couple of the buildings that are up at the uh, the old VA site that the city will um, that we're in a process of acquiring. Um, so as you can see, there's um, been the public hearing held. It's, it comes with both recommendations from the from the uh, historical and also the planning commission, and uh, so. Uh, looking to approve these today. Councilman, Mr. Chair. President Smith. I just want to thank Councilman Wilson because during the meeting, my microphone, my uh, Zoom meeting froze and he was able to take over the meeting. So I just want to thank him for that, for chairing the meetings, the public hearings, and they were really informative. So thank you. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Any one abstention, uh, affirmative recommendation. Um, Bill 944. Bill 944, resolution providing for the designation of the historic structure under Title 11 of the Code of Ordinances that certain structure known as the VA Facilities Laboratory Building 13, located at 7180 Highland Drive in the Lincoln, Lemington, Belmar, 12th Ward. Uh, the owners of this property have no objections to the nomination. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any Abstain. opposed? One abstention. Bill is recommended. That takes us to Bill 1085. Bill 1085, ordinance amending and supplement in the Pittsburgh called Title IX Zoning Article 6. Development Standards, Chapter 914, Parking, Loading, and Access by adding a new Section 914.09J, Parking Access for Single Unit Attached Residential Uses to require rear or side access for off-street parking spaces for single family attached dwellings. Motion to refer this to the Planning Commission for report and recommendation. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It will be referred to the Planning Commission. That takes us to our Urban Recreation Committee, which is chaired by Reverend Burgess. First new paper is Bill 1059. Bill 1059, resolution authorizing the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation and or the Director of Public Safety and the Department of the Office of Management and Budget to enter into agreements in individual amounts of $10,000 or less with performers, instructors, artists, referees, and persons with specialized skills in connection with the department's recreational and instructional programs and special event services. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill Mr. Chair, you can read, <clears throat> you can read all of these community partnership uh, bills together, I think. A lot of them. That'll all the way down to Bill 1068. No, yeah, 1068. It takes you. I think it takes all. Of, it's the rest of the committee. Yeah. Yep. It, you can read them all. Okay. Bill 1060 resolution authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into a community partner access agreement with the Josh Gibson Foundation and a cost for the use of the Amman Community Center in order to provide recreational and community focused activities. Bill 1061, resolution authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into a community partner access agreement with the Macedonia Church at, of Pittsburgh at no cost for the use of the Amman Community Center in order to provide recreational and community focused activities. Bill number 1062, Resolution authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into a community partner access agreement with Ozenum Inc. at no cost or use of the Amman Community Center in order to provide recreational and community focused activities. Bill number 1063, resolution authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into a community partner access agreement with the Hazelwood Youth Mentorship and Athletic Association at a cost for use at, at, at no cost for the use at the Bergwin Community Center in order to provide recreational and community focused activities. Bill number 1064, 
Resolution providing for an agreement and or lease license agreement for the use of certain property or senior facilities for the provision of center services to seniors in an amount not to exceed $15,200 chargeable to and payable from the Seniors Community Trust Fund in the Department of Parks and Recreation. Bill number 1065, resolution authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into a community partner access agreement with the Calabria Club at no cost for the use of the Mount Washington Hale Center in order to provide recreational and community focused activities. Bill number 1067, resolution authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into a community partner access agreement with the Mount Washington Community Center at no cost or use of the Ram Community Center in order to provide recreational and community focused activities. Bill number 1068, Resolution authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into a community partner access agreement with the Pittsburgh Contingency Inc. at no cost for the use of the Ram Community Center in order to provide recreational and community focused activities. Motion to approve. I'm sorry, motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Motion to Thank approve. You. I'll second then. Oh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> any opposed? Mr. Chair, I just want to add just one comment. Last week I had concerns, or two weeks ago when it was introduced, but I did talk to the administration. And I, I just want to thank them for working through everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All bills are recommended. Thank you. That now moves us on to our Innovation Performance and Asset Management Committee, chaired by Councilman Strasburger, Juan Defer Paper, Bill 521. Bill 521, Resolution Repealing, Amending, and Reenacting Resolution Number 18 of 1983, titled Resolution Authorizing and Directing that the Bureau of Cable Communications, Department of Public Works, broadcast all Council's regular legislative sessions standing committee meetings, setting forth the responsibilities of the Department of Innovation and Performance with respect to the meetings of city council and to reflect various changes in the city's departmental organization structure and other changes to reflect technological innovations since 1983. I'll defer to Reverend Burgess. Oh, I, I did not work on this, so I will, where are we at? We're in, I'm motion to hold eight weeks, so give me time. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It will be held eight weeks. Um, now for our Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, which is chaired by Councilwoman Gross. Uh, first deferred paper, Bill 192. Bill 192, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official school facilities plan for the villas at Winter Park at Hackstown Street Extended. Motion to hold 12 weeks at the request of the councilman. Thank you, councilwoman. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Can I ask you a question, Ms. Gross? Councilman Gross, if you don't if you don't mind, Mr. LaBelle. Councilman. So what, what's I know you're our, you're a resident expert on this, right? <laughs> on sewer modules. So what what is our what is council's Authority. I was talking to Sean about this this morning. What these are what federally mandated sort of recommendations that come to us. Well, my understanding is twofold, but I will also issue the caveat that uh, we've been talking to law, we've been talking to PWSA, we've been talking to city planning department, several council members, and there isn't complete agreement. Uh, which is part of the problem, I think, of the mm -hmm. way we've been seeing some problems with the way that modules, when the timing of when they're hitting the council agenda. Um, I, I remember being briefed uh, when I first got onto council by some of the Our Water campaign and people had studied the consent decree at length, et cetera. I assumed, and maybe right, maybe wrongly, that we especially have to vote on these because we are in exceedance, right? And so um, there was a moment 
when my second or third year on council, when the state DEP rejected a sewer permit, because we're not the only body that sees these. Many different bodies have to kind of see and approve these, right? So it goes to PWSA, but it also goes to DEP and it goes to their um, conservation districts. So our Allegheny County conservation districts also have some authority over uh, water systems and so have to also approve it. And, um, but we know that because of the um, Environmental Protection Agency at the federal level, that we are supposed to be taking water out of our system, removing water, Lightman Park as an example, um, but also some of the sewer separations as an example. And so I'm assuming that that is the reason the legislative body has to weigh in on the permitting. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, I, I guess my question, yeah, I, did, what I'm, I'm, I guess my curiosity is what would happen if we said no? Do we have, you know- Well, what, well if, we, if, we, if it comes to vote, we can say no. And then what happens? They have a, is there a appeal process or what happens after that for them? That's a, that's a great question. Um, and I think we should kind of we'll talk about we'll it out. various authorities. Yeah, <clears throat> I would love to continue the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I add something, please? Councilman Cross, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you. So as it relates to this pro this project specifically, uh, I don't know that this pro project is actually going to proceed. Uh, it has not had, um, in fact, it has had overwhelming negative reaction from uh, constituency over a number of probably like five or six years now. And I have reached out to the, um, uh, the uh, uh, those responsible for the project to ask them to please brief me as to what their plans are to proceed with the project or not. And I've done that any number of times, but have not yet received any response. And so my, my initial reaction is to just table the bill, uh, but I don't wanna take that step just yet. That's why I continue to hold it in hopes that at some point in time, the, uh, the developers will reach out to the office and explain their intention on the project. But there's, there's been no movement on it for a number of years now. If I, if I may, if we're having interrogative, um, Chair, Mr. Chair, they, mm -hmm. that's very similar to one of the two of the projects that in um, my district as well, where we just passed for final vote yesterday, maybe last week, um, the very tall 20 story building in the strip district. And you'll, you'll remember that one because it was in the news and I had been mentioning it had failed at planning commission and yet the sewer module had come to the council agenda, which is not the right timing in the process. Um, but then it, after many months of us kind of holding it for a long time, uh, the, the entire project was reworked, went back to planning commission and was approved. And then we approved the sewer module. We may still have done it a little prematurely because I'm not sure that the revision had gone back through PWSA. And this is part of what we're, it seems to maybe have gotten mixed up with some, some, some suggestion um, from some of the, the um, departments is that with the online permitting, um, somehow the order of things got lost um, with some of our sewer modules. Some of them are hitting too late. These products have already been constructed without any authority to connect to the sewer system. Smaller projects have, have you know, hit us way too late and then other projects like big projects are hitting the council agenda way too early in general. Thank you. So, I just wanna thank, I just wanna thank uh, Councilwoman Gross because she has been really amazing and really, really pushing the buttons to make sure that this comes to the council in the right um, sequence. So I just wanna thank her for all the work that she's been doing on this. Appreciate it. I wish we had better answers <laughs> already because we've been, I we've been trying to get them for a while, pushing. but we'll get there. So it was motioned in second to hold this bill for 12 weeks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Bill will be held 12 weeks. Bill 1042. Bill 1042, resolution authorizing a corporation agreement providing for the transfer of funds 
not to exceed $2,803,480 to the City Equipment Leasing Authority for the purchase and leasing of vehicles, equipment, and accessories for use by the city. Motion to approve discussion. Second. Uh, so we had a briefing um, with any members of the administration of the various departments and um, with the board of the Equipment Leasing Authority, some of the members. And I wanna um, say thank you to um, the, each of the people in the briefing being able to answer many questions about things. I, I pressed the board members and the director of public safety about the police vehicles. Um, and I learned a few things that surprised me um, I wrote down numbers of um, that there are some 32 new police cruisers in hand that are out of circulation because they're still waiting for their technology fit outs. Um, something like 18 police vehicles. Uh, the, chief, the director said they're waiting for graphics. I'm not I'm sure actually I didn't press to see what exactly that means. Um, 10 waiting for cameras and four he said we're just not sure where they were in the system of getting to the street so they're um, out of circulation and unavailable um, and that they had been you know had been taken they've installed and they're they're kind of fit out and um, and so I said well I don't see that that's a great reason to spend another million dollars on um, another 20 vehicles, I think is in the, the purchase list. But then I was told that it actually takes almost a year for them to get in hand. Um, and so there's a really complicated forecasting um, that has to happen. Um, I do wanna point out, as you've heard me say before, that the last time we asked publicly that the chief of police, how many officers were on payroll, he said 975. And that we only budgeted in 2020 for 900 officers. Um, and so that is again, one of these kinds of things where there's recruiting classes, a bunch of recruiting classes have come online, uh, but that we should all keep our eyes on that. We don't want to expend something like, you know, a million dollars for 20 extra vehicles if we're actually overstaffed from what we budgeted, especially in it, we're all being very, very mindful of um, the expenditures that we have to make now out of a budget where we had so many revenue shortfalls. Um, but I'm very supportive of the vehicles that are desperately needed in DPW and environmental services. And, and we talked a bit about that. So I'll stop now because I know that other members had um, their own questions during the briefing and, and their, their own things. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any any further discussion? I, Councilman. President Smith. Thank you. Um, I just wanna say that um, during the briefing, I, I had a few questions, but my questions were mostly the structure of the board. I did ask about the police vehicles as well, but I also asked that the administration, and I couldn't, I just want council to know that I continued the conversation with the administration after, um, just to ask that they still look into additional vehicles for DPW, because we do know that they are desperately needed. Um, mostly because they have the vehicles, they're just older and um, don't necessarily serve the purpose for the city of Pittsburgh at, um, in this time. And I, and I asked to look at the structure of the board, um, but I also wanna thank the people who do serve on the board because it is a tedious job. Um, a lot of people, directors come with a, lot, a big wish list. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the budget to um, cover all those needs. So I just, and so these people go through this, this process and this, um, these recommendations and I wanna thank them for, the, for their time um, that they serve on there. But I do think that we also need to look at the board uh, structure in the future. So I, I am in those conversations still and we still are talking about the DPW vehicles. So I wanna let people know that we're, um, we're, still, we're still in discussions. We're still having conversations. Thank you. Any Thanks. other members? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Um, that takes us to our first new paper, which is Bill 1080. Bill 1080 resolution providing for, for an intergovernmental cooperation agreement between the city and the Bureau of Wilkinsburg for the collection of a portion of the Bureau's municipal waste by the city for a term of five years 
commencing January 1st, 2021 and ending December 31st, 2025. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing Councilman Cockhill. Uh, I just had, this is unrelated to the bill. And I <clears throat> to, uh, a source outside the city that Wilkinsburg is looking to incorporate with the city of Pittsburgh. Just wanted to mention that. I didn't know if other members were aware of that. And if anybody had any information on it, I'd love to know a little bit about it, but I believe they're gonna put a question on the, as a referendum on the ballot as to see if they would want that, meaning the Wilkinsburg community. Um, anybody have any information on that? I, Mr. Chair? Yes, Councilman Burgess. I just started to hear echoes about this, uh, Councilman Cockhill. Um, my, as you know, my district abuts Wilkinsburg, and so it would be probably the most, I mean, it would be, it, uh, there's no doubt it would wind up being in my council district um, if it became part of the city of Pittsburgh. Um, I, I think what has to, I, 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 um, this is, don't, this may not be exact, but I think that both they would have to vote to ask us, and then we would have to vote to accept them. I think both things would have to happen. They would have to, because that's what happened with Allegheny, right? Um, but, but they kind of, you know, gerrymandered that vote so that they um, they merged the two, the two votes together um, to force Allegheny to become part of the city of Pittsburgh. But I think, I, I, I have not, I, I've heard that from the Wilkinsburg side, I have not heard anything from the city side though, right? I think from our side, although we provide them services, taking over their portfolio, I think would cause us some challenges um, in, that, in that the, um, um, the city is not a, it's not a healthy city, right? And so we would be taking over a city in distress that would then um, further stretch our already limited resources. And so um, I have not heard, and again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just talking um, out loud with you. I have not heard um, anything from the city side in terms of bringing in that population. I have heard some conversation on the Wilkinsburg side, and I know that it's fairly divisive, right? There are, there are people who want to do it, and there's people who, at the same time, are are strongly um, against against it. So I I think they're working out their own kind of local politics. That's my sense of it. But again, it's just uh, I, I, I just I just heard about it really the last maybe really last month or so. No, I'm glad you uh, chimed in there, Rev, because one of my questions was, is it a good thing? Is it not a good thing? I I, I wasn't quite sure, and being that it would lie in your district, will I'll certainly take your lead on it. Um, I do know this, that they are out there soliciting foundations to raise the money to get the necessary monetary you know, funds that they need in order to proceed. So, so that's where it's at. Um, you know, I didn't mean to distract from the agenda. I just was curious as to if anybody knew anything. So thanks. Can I just add a, just a comment to that? I, I certainly hope it's not a similar campaign that the foundations are um, considering embarking upon um, similar to what we just had with the park tax. I hope that if there's a campaign or some effort to um, to do so, it's really resident driven. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Any further discussion on Bill 1080? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Bill 1081. Bill 1081, resolution amending resolution number 279 of 2020, providing for the execution of a corporation agreement with the URA for the performance of certain work in connection with the 2019-2020 CDBG program and providing for the payment of the cost not to exceed $4,558,960 by including additional emergency small business support, housing stabilization program, and URA project delivery deliverables pertaining to small business development, tenant assistance, homeowner assistance, and URA personnel 
raising the total cost thereof to the not to exceed amount of $11,905,823 by including an additional economic development and housing HVAC system line item for an amount not to exceed $250,000 and an increase to the tenant assistant line item by an amount not to exceed $2 million, raising the total cost thereof to the amount not to exceed $14,155,823, Council District all. Question to approve discussion? Second. Um, I see some members from the URA on um, in our Zoom waiting room. I saw, um, I think, Jessica Smith-Perry um, and I just wanted to give um, anyone from URA a chance to talk about the work that they've been doing this past year. We've given them a lot of our CARES Act funds. And my um, understanding from my briefings that it has been impressive. And I always like to give credit where it's due because I've been a critic, I had been a critic of the URA for many years, but I've been very pleased with the work that they've been doing, especially over the last year, is that, well, we, as I think citizens were very disappointed in our some states um, at Harrisburg, lack of moving federal assistance to actually get to people who needed relief um, and have seen problems at other levels of government. Um, the URA has moved the money that city council has given them to the people and the small businesses that needed it. And so I just wanted to say, Jessica, are you there? Can you join us? Yes, I'm here. There you, are. there you are. Appreciate it. <laughs> if you could introduce yourself for the yes. listeners. I'm Jessica Smith Perry, uh, Director of Residential Lending. Um, I'm also here with uh, David Geiger and um, Jeremy Carter. And Jeremy is our, our manager for our consumer based programs. So I'm going to let him speak and, and um, talk in a little bit of detail about, about who all we've helped this year. But but thank you, Councilwoman, for, for your comments. Um, this has been a crazy year for everybody, but um, we have worked on um, a pretty substantial rental assistance program. Um, and also through the, the funding that council gave us prior, um, also mortgage assistance as well. Uh, we've helped over a thousand households with the rental assistance um, to date. Um, Jeremy, can you please speak to a little bit about the demographics and um, our, of our consumer base? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so of everyone that we served in 2020, about a, a little over a thousand households, uh, about over 85% have been minority head of households and over 75% are women head of households. Uh, most the most people that we are seeing in the program are single female head of households with children. Um, but almost everyone we serve are, is, has been under 50% area median income. Um, and we, we did um, increase our outreach efforts to uh, ensure that immigrant, refugee, and newcomer Americans uh, are covered in this program. Uh, and through that outreach, we were able to ensure that 113 immigrant and refugee households uh, prevented eviction during this time. Thank you, Jeremy. Is there anything else, Councilwoman, that you would like us to touch on? No, I appreciate that. And I think it was just really important for our members to hear and the public to hear that we are moving the money that we're getting um, and that you are with the RA's assistance. And, but there is so much more help that is needed, right? And so for other levels of government, um, uh, we need these assistance packages um, so that we can keep people, especially and, and in the city of Pittsburgh, that means women and children, right? And so our children don't end up on the street. Um, so I really appreciate your work, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and council will be seeing in, in upcoming weeks um, funding that flows through the coronavirus relief package um, as well. Uh, you'll be seeing that coming. Um, and additionally, through the Housing Opportunity Fund, um, which um, Councilman O'Connor transferred some additional funding into recently, um, there is a legal prevention um, line item and the URA is about ready to roll out a program to help um, folks with legal assistance as it relates to um, both homeowners and tenants. Thank you. Council members are working separately um, um, with some hopefully legislation that will help us with the eviction um, 
crisis that we're seeing as well. We've been meeting with advocates and um, I did some work um, over the last week trying to figure out a way that we could strengthen or close the loopholes that we're seeing because we, we are still seeing people being evicted in spite of the moratoriums, uh, the way it's moving through this, the Pennsylvania courts. Right. So that was one of the main requests as well. Any, any dollars that we can find to put into legal assistance for those evictions that are, that are actually happening um, is, would be well spent. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Anything from other members? Councilman Coghill? You're on mute, Councilman. Sorry about that. Jessica, I just have a uh, question. So of the, say, $10 million that we took in the first year, where is that? I mean, as far as like funds used, is it depleted from the first year or is there a couple million left or? The, the first year is, is pretty much fully expended. Um, so we have received three years of funding, uh, 30 million, and, and then just recently you approved uh, the fourth year, which, which we don't have yet. Um, and about half of the 30 million, so about 15 of the 30 million have been, has been expended, but about 25 of the 30 million, um, an additional 10 plus the 15 has been committed to other projects that just have not yet closed and dispersed. So we're using it up as it comes in. Yes, we are absolutely using it as it comes. It's it's kind of flying out the doors. Um, yeah, to, to people in all, all the different districts. Okay, good enough. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Which is why the bond conversation is so important, yeah. Councilman. <laughs> reading my mind, Daniel. You're reading my mind, buddy. <laughs> um, any further discussion from members? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 In the post, bill is recommended. Thank you, you, Thank you. for being here. Thanks, everybody. Um, that does exhaust our agenda. We do have a, some meeting announcements. Tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m., council will meet for an executive session on legal matters. Next week, council will hold their regular and standing committee meetings on Tuesday, February 2nd and Wednesday, February 3rd at 10 a.m. respectively. To register to speak at next week's council meetings, please fill out the sign up form in its entirety on the council meeting webpage by 9 a.m. the day of the meeting. You may also register by calling the city clerk's office at 412 255 2138. Are there any announcements from members? Councilman? I'll go after Reverend Burgess. Oh, you can, you can. Go ahead, Madam President. No, mine was just, I just want to offer our condolences to the uh, Chaffee family, Lisa Chaffee. Um, yeah. They lost their, uh, mm -hmm. their father and their grandfather. So I just want to um, offer our condolences to them. Yeah, certainly with our prayers. Uh, so I have been thinking about this for the last few months, really. And I have been hesitant to have this conversation, but I think it's time. Um, the pandemic that we're facing is extraordinary and it is affecting every aspect of our life. Um, I have, during my time on council, even though I do have a, a background in, in education, I have, for the most part, um, treated the school board and the schools, public schools, as sort of separate, and they are separate government bodies, somewhat independent of us. But I think, I believe that now in this, in this pandemic with the children um, being taught remotely and knowing that somewhere close to 50% of them are not doing their work, um, now um, in the pandemic, that when they are not in school and at home, they are under our jurisdiction with health and safety. I think that it is time for us as a city um, to jointly begin having conversations with the schools as to their rationale and the union's rationale as to what they're doing, how they're doing it in a very public way. And so um, um, I, I would not normally go down this road and I hope to do it with members, but I think it's time for us now to sort of flex our oversight of families in Pittsburgh and I'm going to propose to have a series. I don't know how many, I don't know if it needs to be monthly or a week or, 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 but I don't know how the, the pace of it. 
I think we need the school board leader, the, the, the not necessarily the school board leaders, we certainly need the superintendent office and, and the staff to come before us, lay out specifically what their plans are and the numbers and its impact because um, what they're doing is not in isolation. By having the kids home, they're impacting, and not whether they should or should not, I think we need to hear their rationale because by having the kids home, that means there are parents that cannot work, go to work, right? There's, this is, this is having, and some of, you know, members of council have school-age children. I mean, I'm blessed that my children are older now. And so my thinking is to, to bring leaders of the public schools to come to council to give us um, directly, we are, um, unlike the, the school board, we are full-time um, city representatives with staff, and resources. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting, I'm calling for table, a, a series of, of cable cast post agendas that we get an update on the, on the schools because um, the status quo is unacceptable. I think every, all of us know this, it's unacceptable. Our kids, these kids are not learning. They are not. And, and anyone who, all the data says that I have, I have these. I have what? Oh, how many of them? There, 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 uh, there are nine of them now. My my nieces had a child. I have nine. I have nine. You know, grand nieces and nephews school age, right? And they are not learning. I know this personally, and I'm 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 not hostile to with the school board. I don't I don't know enough, but I just think that we need to now exercise our oversight right role in terms of overall the city to bring them into partnership to explain to us their rationale, why they're doing, what their data says, what the outcomes are, because these kids are also our responsibility. The health and safety of these children um, belong to the city of Pittsburgh, not just to the Board of Education and the parents. And so that's my motion really is the call for a series of post agendas and work with um, council president and members of council and the school school board administration and, and school board members to come before us in a televised public way to explain their process and their outcomes and, you know, and their plans. That's sort of my thinking. I'd like to say a second with discussion, please. Sure. Th yes, council president. Thank you. Thank you. And I just like to point out that years ago, this council put in place an education commission It is sitting vacant with not one member on there. I think this has been a conversation that I've been saying since I've been here that we have got to stop making ourselves exclusive from one another. We need to work together. These kids are our kids. The families are our families. The teachers are our residents, some of them. And I just wanna say, I, I've been marching this drum, beating this drum for a long time about the school system and how it affects our city. The city of Pittsburgh has lost over 14,000 families with school-aged children in a five-year period, and that was years ago, the last time I checked. I have no idea what it is currently, now, but I will look into it. It has, the district has a direct effect on our city, so we should absolutely be working together, but not just now because there's a pandemic. We should have been doing this all along because of what the effect it has on our kids, because our kids are not learning in a lot of cases, because they need a lot of help, because we need a lot of help, but because we care. So I'm going to say, if we want to have these post agendas, I'm all for it, but I want to see that people seated on the Education Commission so that we bring people together on a regular basis to work through all concerns, whether it's what kids are doing after school, mm -hmm. how the city can partner with it, with, with programs, uh, whether or not we could advocate for school boards to be paid positions, because they're not paid positions, they're volunteers. And I want to say that you know a lot of people give up a lot of time. Um, it's not a job that's that um, a lot of people run for uh, because it's not paid. And yet I think Philly and, and Pittsburgh are, are more unique than other places. So maybe. You muted yourself. President. I'm all for having the meetings, but I want to also make sure that we're seating that board and council can do so if the administration doesn't feel comfortable doing so or um, doesn't, uh, they have their own meetings and, and their own process. I understand but then we could do it. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna move forward with that next week. And if, if this, we're gonna go down this road, I'm gonna really go down this road. Thank you. Anything from other members? Councilwoman Gross? I just wanna um, echo those comments and, and um, 
say that it's, as I think Councilman Burr just alluded to, it's that these, and, and Councilman Smith also, that these are our families and our kids. And it isn't only about educational attainment during this time, right? This has been 10 months or more now. I mean, it's also about people's mental health, um, all the kinds of support services that um, we, we need to find out about and, and the needs that are out there so that we can work together to meet those needs. I mean, this is an incredible stress on so many families um, and, uh, and we worry about them, right? And so uh, I think it's, you're, you're right, Councilman, this is the right time to have that conversation. Thank you. Any other members? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Councilwoman Strasberger, then Councilman Coghill. Thank you. Um, I'm glad that this that you brought this up. Thank you. And the way I think about it is, and I know this was mentioned before, but um, less of a treading on other people's turf and more, how do we work together? In part because, as has been brought up, they're not full time positions. They're not paid positions. They only have so much bandwidth as school board members to do what they need to do. And ours are full-time positions with staff. That's not to say that we can completely take over all education issues, but we have some more capacity and we can probably work, if we work together, we can probably leverage some of that. Um, we can at least share information, help to get the word out about public meetings, and work together with the resources that we have and the resources that they as school board members and the administration has to create something that's larger than two separate entities could do separately. Um, and I'll just echo everything that everyone said about, you know, our, our city, the health of our, our city, the health of the people in our city being inextricably linked to the health of our schools. I mean, it's everything. It's not just economic health, it's everything. So I, I agree that we have a role to play here. Um, and I would like to, even if they resist at first, which historically they have, many have, not all, I would like to try to include the school board members in these hearings if possible. And if they don't want to participate, then that's their prerogative. But I'd like to at least try to build that relationship um, and see if it can't be something that is ongoing so we can have an ongoing relationship rather than what I understand to be sort of one-off relationships here and there with council members and school board members. Um, lastly, I'll just say to Councilwoman Gross's point, which is um, spot on about families and family mental health and family stability. Um, as we've seen, this is, um, you know, obviously the pandemic has uncovered racial inequities, other demographic inequities, but um, one of them is gender inequity. And the number of women who have had to, have been forced to lose, to leave the workforce um, is staggering. When we saw the unemployment numbers come out last quarter, the number of men entering the workplace increase, the number of women, 100% drop. It was all people who lost their jobs were basically 100% women. And it's 150,000 jobs lost and they were all women's jobs. They were, and and that is just staggering. Um, I mean, it doesn't surprise anyone who's paying attention, but clearly there is a role for bodies like city council to play here when it comes to treating um, both childcare, but also the education system as a social issue and not just a family issue. So I think there's a role for us to play um, with that angle as well. So I'm really glad we're gonna get this started. Thank you. I'll, Leslie, I'll just say, I do acknowledge that there are members like Council President Smith who have been beating this drum for a long time, have been involved in it for a long time. I also recognize um, Councilman Lavelle, um, our, our finance chair has, has been you know, instrumental in these ways uh, for a long time too. So um, I don't want to pretend like this is a new thing, but I'm glad we're, this is a resurgence of some, a long, a longstanding conversation. Councilman Carkill. Yes, um, that's a startling statistic. I, I didn't realize that, but um, I want to thank all the members for bringing this up. I, I believe it's very important. I do recognize the different bodies. I know the school board you know, is independent of us. Um, however, as a councilman, you know, I believe the number one deterrent for young families to move into the city and call Pittsburgh their home 
is our education system. Now, I'm not knocking public schools. I'm a product of it, uh, grades one through 12. Uh, you know, I attended Pittsburgh Public Schools. I have a really good relationship with my school board member, uh, Billy Gallagher, and I think he realizes that too. You know, we've talked about this on many occasions. So I'm just happy that the conversation is opening them up, opening up uh, amongst us. Um, I always felt like our hands were tied and perhaps we can get involved in a, like somebody said, you know, not so much of a demanding way, but like, how can we help? So, um, so, so that's all. I just wanted to add my two cents and say, I think we really need to address this problem in the future. Uh, again, it's the number one deterrent, I feel, for young families to move their kids into the city. And not everybody has the money to put their children through private schools. So um, I look forward to those conversations. Thanks. Thank you. Any other members? If not, I will, I will quickly say um, to President Smith's uh, comments about the actual committee. Um, both she and I served on that educational sort of task force. I believe it was the first or second year that uh, Mayor Peduto came in the office that it was created. And we met with the school board maybe three or four times. Um, I think twice here, twice over there. However, there was concern um, that we were trying to impede on their sort of territory and, and potentially take over. And so those meetings weren't as productive as what we had hoped they they could be. However, given the pandemic, um, given that the school board is struggling, I'm hope I'm hopeful that they'll be more open to the conversation. Uh, Reverend Burgess knows because we had a very long conversation just last week about this topic, and we've had a, a number of them. Um, and he's heard me voice levels of frustration um, as to how things have been handled and what's going to happen with our children to the extent that I, I shared with him that I think we need to begin reimagining our public schools and how we're actually teaching our children. I mean, the reality is if you look at the statistics due to the pandemic, most children are about six to eight months behind where they would normally be if they were actually in school learning. And so how do you make up for that lost time? Um, I believe we need to start having a conversation about year round school. Um, as opposed to what the way we currently structure. Otherwise, many of these children will never catch up. Um, long, long story short, um, I'm again, completely up for the conversation. Reverend Burgess knows I've been trying to figure out how we can have it um, and how we can sort of respectfully insert ourselves into the conversation. Um, I would just ask that we take some time to maybe plan out the conversation so that we can sort of have a series of, of topics that we wanna have um, so that we can sort of structure them in a meaningful manner and so that they can understand our intent and our intent is on the right side. Um, so with that being said, did you make a formal motion, Reverend? Yes. A, a series of televised post agendas um, concerning um, uh, Pittsburgh Public Schools and the education of our children during the pandemic. And I seconded the motion. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We will get those scheduled. Um, any further announcements from members? Seeing none, we need a motion to approve the minutes and adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Aye.